Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, it's a delight to be here. Um, so uh, we've been exploring the use of Bob and Trilt as uh, research tools for a number of years now, um, initially with uh, a whole series of undergraduate students, and so both uh, Holly and Emma, who unfortunately is not able to be here today, were undergraduate students working on, on aspects of this with me, and uh, Holly then has moved on to doing a PhD using Bob, and I won't say any more like that because that's part of what she's going to be talking about uh, later on. So this is um, something that we've developing over a while, uh, sufficient to a point where we thought there was a guide enough um, information to share with people. And uh, I should say right from the outset, certain aspects of this are, I hope, intuitive, uh, but we're just putting the whole thing together and into a package uh, that you can then follow through, which has been the main aim of, of what we've been doing. So I really don't need to stress in the, in the kind of the, with the current audience the importance of media in general. Um, we know that popular media has a role to play in providing information, in helping people with their understanding, or indeed possibly with their misunderstanding, and in the whole kind of shaping of, of their worldview. And indeed, there are whole academic disciplines based around that. It's, it's fair to say that analysis of print media has been going on for rather longer. Uh, when I was preparing this, I was remembering uh, back to 1990, when uh, it was Italia, uh, the World Cup in, in Italy, uh, and um, one of my housemates, uh, mad keen on football, uh, thought he'd, he'd landed the perfect job because he was working for the sociology of football unit in, in Leicester and assumed that they would take him out to Italy to kind of attend some of the matches and, and observe people and so on. They in fact left him behind uh, buying all the daily newspapers every day and cutting out the relevant stories and sticking them in, in, in a scrapbook. Now that kind of approach has moved on with print media through the provision of databases such as LexisNexis and, uh, and Factiva, which have allowed people to do electronic searches of data. But up until this point, there really hasn't been uh, an appropriate equivalent for broadcast media. Um, and our suggestion is that Trilt and Bob are now in a state where they do provide that uh, for us. And I like to think of them as a boundary collection. So it's a recognized, fairly constrained uh, collection of uh, material in one archive in, in one place which people can then uh, draw upon in a, in a consistent way. Bart's already introduced uh, Trill and Bob and I'm sure the audience today are very familiar with these anyway. A television and radio index for learning and teaching. Bart gave an eloquent explanation of, of, of what it is and how much is there but just uh, to put on record that that's been in existence since June 2001. Uh, Bob, sometimes called Box of Broadcast, but that's not an official name for it. Uh, and then now, uh, that's where we can stream TV and radio uh, programmes for education, but as we're suggesting for research as well. Now with more than three million records. And a key aspect of this is that both are searchable and that you can export the data with different degrees of ease from those two different um, archives so that you can then uh, analyse those and then, and then select the programmes that you want to, to focus in on. And obviously we can look at the content, but also there's the, the possibility with Bob of looking at the context as well. So uh, looking at the visual framing, for example, or the role that music is playing and the message that's being conveyed. Uh, looking then at the uh, aspects that surround the programme as well. The, the, the way that you're set up uh, to expect things by the continuity announcer, by the interstitials that are coming, advertising the channel before the programme, and indeed the adverts themselves on, on some channels. So, in terms of setting up a project, one of the crucial things, obviously, is to, is to set appropriate parameters to begin with, and that's really to allow you to get meaningful data out. And this, for anyone who's done any research project, that shouldn't come as a surprise. Uh, having said that, though, I have you know, sat in on some presentations uh, where uh, someone's, uh, one, picked one I'm thinking of, somebody was talking about um, Marvel films, and uh, they said that they're going to stop at a particular point in the, in the film collection. And then they s said, well, why is that? So, well, the, follow the films after that don't fit with my hypothesis. And that's kind of really uh, a rather faux way of looking at it. So you've got to think about the scope of the project. Uh, what's going to justify the project to readers and crucially to reviewers of potential peer-reviewed magazines, uh, PhD supervisors and so on. So some of the factors that will go into this, uh, one thing is uh, the date, uh, 
dates that you want to look at. And it could be that there are particular events or events around which you want to, to hinge your, your uh, analysis. It could be that there's a particular defined period of time that's, that's uh, established from the project itself, from the, the main aims that you're wanting to look at. But we want to point out as well that there's also some important things to bear in mind in using Bob on the basis of the actual database itself and the evolution of that database. So uh, a particular important date is the 1st of August 2016, and that's a point at which uh, a number of core channels, which I'll identify in a moment, started to be recorded by default as opposed to being uh, on demand. And so those core channels are BBC One, it's the London area version specifically, uh, BBC Two, ITV One, again the London version, Channel Four, Five, BBC Four, More Four, uh, BBC Three, when it's been broadcast, it was on to begin with, then it was off, uh, uh, and then it's now back on. And then uh, BBC News 24 and Sky News were added in April 2020, uh, driven by the whole recognition that we needed to capture uh, some of the pandemic coverage in particular, but that's continued. And also then from March 2020, Al Jazeera has been added to that list of core TV channels. So another criteria to look at is, is the uh, format. Are you going to look at TV or radio or both? And there could be good justifications for making those choices. Um, Holly will be explaining uh, a little bit later that the lack of transcripts for uh, radio can mean that the database is skewed in some way if you, if you, if you were looking uh, at the use of both sorts of media. Uh, now that's not a problem, provided people don't start to try and make quantitative statements about uh, TV shows more of something than radio, for example, when it may be actually a reflection of the availability or not of transcripts. Uh, there are two core radio channels, uh, Radio 4 and Radio 4 Extra, which was uh, Radio 7. And then uh, finally from me, just thinking about genre, so perhaps most obviously in the kind of area that I'm, I'm working, uh, we might be thinking about documentaries, but it might be for somebody else. A drama will be the thing they wanted to look at. Or perhaps uh, comparing and contrasting a particular representation in documentary and in drama. So all of that then leads into uh, the guide. Uh, you have got the QR code that you can access that. I've also put the, the URL there. We're not going to talk you uh, blow by blow through uh, the different sections right now. Um, partly because there isn't time available for that, partly because it's there, and we hope it's accessible uh, in its own right. Uh, but instead, what we're going to do, I'm going to hand over to Holly, and she's going to talk a bit about her project, her current project, uh, as an example of the ways in which we're using these resources. Thank you, Chris. Feels a bit like I'm about to just stand up routine. <laughs> this mic. Uh, so yeah, uh, as Chris said, I'm just going to run you through an example, like a real-life example of the sort of things that we talk about in the guide. So in case anyone is interested, uh, my PhD is about representations of cancer genomics and personalised medicine in UK broadcast media. Always have to take a big breath before saying that one. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the things you think about is, okay, this is a project where um, pub the public has a vested interest um, and we have a vested interest in finding out what the public think. Um, so you kind of think, hmm, is, is, is broadcast media still popular compared to social media, especially for someone of my generation? A lot of people my age will get all of their information from social media, but as you can see here from some of the uh, Barb statistics, people still watch a reasonable amount. And so for us science communicators, we're still very interested in, in finding out what people think, and it's still a significant tool for the communication of science to the public. Um, so my study is, is qualitative, um, which I do think this kind of um, methodology lends itself to, um, and we're aiming to generate. I was aiming to generate a set of programmes sort of using this methodology. So as we've discussed, the main tools that we use are Bob and Trilt, uh, which you can see here. Um, so these are the search tools that you actually use within them, um, and I'll go into a few more details about like specific parts of these. So uh, I thought I'd give you a few examples of some of the parameters that Chris was talking about. So I used a five-year date range um, in my searches. Uh, this is because there was a, we talk about, you know, the release of like a seminal paper. So there was uh, a paper, government paper release called uh, Generation Gene Genome back in 2016. And so I chose this as my start date just because that seemed like a logical thing because this is when a lot of um, 
programming kind of blew up with this with this topic um, in it. Um, TV and radio, so I chose to use both tools because, um, as I'll discuss a bit more, they, they can lend themselves to bias towards a particular type of content, um, but also because the, the programming for both of these topics is, is, so, is so rich for science programming, like there's so much valuable content on Radio 4, for example, that I wouldn't want to miss out on, uh, so in my case I wanted to use both. But as you can see, there is an option um, for selecting TV only or radio only, depending on you know, the scope of your project. Um, I used 228 search terms, which sounds like a lot, but a lot of it is um, you don't have to use just a single word. You can use combinations, um, which is where Boolean operators come in. Uh, so for example, I searched for cancer and genome or cancer and genomics, or even added like a third, a third search term to that as well. Um, and Trill, as you can see here, allows you to do that. You can also do it in Bob, but I'll go into that a bit more in a second. So before you even begin your searches, you should keep in mind some of these differences um, or just sort of like factors about the tools. Um, so as Chris said, they use different metadata. So for example, Bob searches transcripts, as we were discussing, which biases it against radio. And obviously, if you're wanting to include television uh, radio programs as well, that's you know it lends itself to using Trill, which also searches for program titles, synopsis, like that kind of thing. Um, so, if you want to avoid bias, use both tools as well. I would recommend, and we kind of discuss this a bit more in the guide as well. Um, one of the big things is how you export results. So with Trilt, as you can see here, there's a sort of built-in feature that you can use where you can export uh, a CSV file, which is Excel ready. Um, and it's, so this is essentially like a, a semi-automated way of doing it. Uh, I've, I've used this as well, but I've also used Bob and there isn't a similar feature on that at the moment. Uh, so you do have to sort of manually put all of that into Excel. So. Um, another thing is to note is that rebroadcasts can appear in your search results, um, so it's not necessarily a reflection of, of another program in the result. You can get an abridged version, so Radio 4 will often rebroadcast the same program but a condensed version later on in the day. Um, you also get BBC Sign Zone programs, which are fundamentally the same thing, but uh, same program but with a sign language interpreter. Um, there's also differences in how you use the Boolean operators. So, as I said before, with Trill, you can you can select which one you want to use. In Bob, you just have to type it in, put your search term in quotation marks. But it, there's lots more details on how to do that in the guide. Um, so, as I've just said, there's differences also in Windows versus Mac um, in in the export and then importing them as well. Um, but that is very thoroughly discussed in the guide as well. I didn't want to <laughs> drag you through all of that at the moment. Um, again, there is a possibility of repeats within your search results. So this means that, say you've got 400 and something results in there, that's not reflective of the number of unique programs that you have necessarily. Um, and this is something that I found because you get a lot of crossover between the search terms. So for example, cancer and genome and cancer and genomics will bring up a lot of the same programs in the results. Uh, so this is just something to bear in mind. Again, you get the abridged and sign zone versions as well. And this is kind of what lends itself to the next part of the guide where you're looking at potentially excluding those repeats. Um, and you do this using unique program ID, so the truth ID it says, or just program ID on Bob. Um, and these are the same across the two as well. So a program that's on Trill will have the same ID as it does on Bob. Um, so we use Excel's find and replace tool. Again, there's some differences between Windows and Mac, um, but it's, it's minimal um, and we go through the differences in the guide. Um, but as you can see here, all it does is highlighting the repeat um, and then you can put in repeat to highlight it or whatever word you fancy um, and then it's easy to identify if you then want to remove them from the um, data set. Um, so because of the abridged and sign zone versions and various other things this method is not flawless um, you know as researchers it's important to go through and double check triple check your results anyway but this kind of just proves proves that point um, because abridged and sign, sign zone versions, particularly sign zone, it's fundamentally the exact same program, but it will have a different unique ID. So that's just something to bear in mind. Um, so these should generally be identified manually. 
Uh, there's also the possibility of simultaneous broadcast. So you see this quite a lot with BBC programmes, particularly the news broadcasts, where they're broadcast simultaneously on BBC One, BBC News 24, um, and these will have different IDs as well. So just to give you an idea of you know, the effect, the impact that you know, exclusion repeats, that kind of thing can have, I started off with about 2,500 results from both using all of my search terms. Um, after going through the process of you know, this repeat exclusion with Excel, uh, I was left with 339 results, um, so quite, quite the drop. Um, but at the moment, I've left this to include abridged versions, that kind of thing, the simultaneous broadcasts. Um, what you do next with this set of programmes is very much up to you um, and depends on the scope of your research question, what you're wanting to look at. So the next steps, I'm sure our colleagues from Nottingham can discuss a bit more about the sort of things that you can use, use the programmes for. But for example, I'm looking at using inclusion and exclusion criteria to reduce the set of programmes down more, make sure that they're relevant to the topic. Um, you can also, uh, you can use mixed methods approaches, but you know, it does lend itself to a qualitative analysis for this sort of thing. Um, but you know, quantitative is also possible. Um, and then there's the audience research possibility as well.